dear parishioners and the friends of St. Patrick's Basilica, greetings to you all from the Oblate community in Fremantle. At this difficult time, we hold you in our prayers and remember you in our community mass. Dear friends, let us hold on to our faith and trust in Jesus at this difficult time of our history. During the Easter season, the Angelus is replaced by the Regina Chile. Regina Chile is Latin for the expression, O Queen of Heaven Rejoice. Now let us pray the Regina Chile followed by Mass. O Queen of Heaven Rejoice, for he whom you did merit to bear has risen as he said. Pray for us to God. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who gave joy to the world through the resurrection of thy Son, O Lord Jesus Christ, grant we beseech thee that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life. Through Christ our Lord. Now let us begin the Holy Eucharistic celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear brothers and sisters, Today, our church in Australia especially remembers and commemorates the feast of Our Lady, Help of Christians. On this special day, we offer this Mass for the reposed souls of Helen Griffith, Cesarina Naha. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Along with this intention, I also pray for all of you and for all your families, and especially all those who are in need of uh, Lord's support, Lord's strength and courage, especially in our day-to-day -day life, all those who have requested of our prayers and masses. May our Lord continue to bless all of us, through Our Lady, help of Christians. Dear brothers and sisters, as we gather around this altar of the Lord, thank the Lord for this beautiful day. While thanking the Lord, let us recall to our minds our unworthiness and ask God's pardon and mercy. You were said to heal the content of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ of mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us in everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who placed the love of Our Lady, help of Christians, in the hearts of those who brought the Catholic faith to these shores. Grant through her intercession wisdom to our leaders 
and integrity to our citizens so that under her protection Australia may know harmony, justice and peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. Wisdom brings up her own sons and cares for those who seek her. Whoever loves her, loves life. Those who wait on her early will be filled with happiness. Whoever holds her close will inherit honor, and wherever he walks, the Lord will bless him. Those who serve her minister to the Holy One and the Lord loves those who love her. Whoever obeys her judges aright, and whoever pays attention to her dwells secure. If he trusts himself to her, he will inherit her, and his descendants will remain in possession of her. For though she takes him at first through winding ways, bringing fear and faintness on him, plaguing him with her discipline until she can trust him and testing him with her ordeals. In the end, she will lead him back to the straight road and reveal her secrets to him. The word of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Praise, O servant of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. May the name of the Lord be blessed both now and forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, praised be the name of the Lord. High above all nations is the Lord, above the heavens his glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Who is like the Lord our God, who has risen on high to his throne, yet stoops from the heights to, the, to look down, to look down upon the heaven and earth? Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. From the dust he lifts up the lowly, from the dung heap he raises the poor, to set him in the company of princes, yes, with the princes of his people. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The language of the cross may be illogical to those who are not on the way to salvation, but those of us who are on the way see it as God's power to save. As scripture says, I shall destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing all the learning of the learned. Where are the philosophers now? Where are the scribes? Where are any of our thinkers today? Do you see now how God has shown up the foolishness of human wisdom? If it was God's wisdom that human wisdom should not know God, it was because God wanted to save those who have faith through the foolishness of the message that we preach. And so, while the Jews demand miracles and the Greeks look for wisdom, here are we preaching a crucified Christ, to the Jews an obstacle that they cannot get over, to the pagans madness, but to those who have been called, whether they are Jews or Greeks, a Christ who is the power and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Happy are you, O blessed Virgin Mary. Without dying, you won the martyr's crown beside the cross of the Lord. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clophus, Mary of Magdala. Seeing his mother and the disciple, he loved standing near her. Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, This is your mother. And from that moment, the disciple made a place for her in his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Now today we're celebrating a very special day, uh, our day in a very special way, Our Lady Help of Christians, patroness of our country, Australia. <clears throat> Yesterday was the actual feast day, but of course the feast of the uh, Assumption, the, uh, sorry, the, uh, in, um, <clears throat> our Lord going to heaven, the Ascension, that took over. So we're celebrating the feast today. Now a little bit of the history behind the feast. The title, Mary, Help of Christians, goes back to the Christian victory over the Saracens at the Battle of Lepanto in 1572. When Pope Pius V led the Christian world then in praying the rosary, while Don John of Austria and his crusaders battled against the Turks. In 1815, the feast was introduced into the church's liturgical calendar. In 1809, Napoleon reacted to his excommunication by Pope Pius VII by taking him as a prisoner to uh, France, away from Rome. Rosaries were prayed then to Mary on the exiled Pope's behalf. <clears throat> Napoleon's army was destroyed during his 1812 campaign against Russia, that was followed by his final defeat at the famous Battle of Waterloo. So Napoleon was pushed out of power and had to retire. On May the 24th, 1814, Pope Pius VII returned to Rome in triumph. A year later, he established this feast of Mary, help of Christians, for May the 24th. Now, in 1819, a father, Thery, T-H-E-R-R-Y, who was the first priest to come to Australia, dedicated his first church to Mary, help of Christians. Then in 1841, Father Thery requested the Archbishop of Sydney um, to dedicate the country in Mary's name. So in 1844, there was a council of the church in Sydney, and this feast of Mary was chosen then as the patronal feast of Australia, and Our Lady as the patroness of Australia. And then again at another ceremony in 1852, Australia was solemnly dedicated to Mary's name. Now, just as there are patrons for the arts, for sporting bodies, events, etc., so also um, we need patrons for our spiritual life, and no better, and for our country, no better than Mary, God's mother. So, like Mary, we Christians and Catholics today have a tremendous advantage in the faith that we have and profess. And in our individual struggles to try and live good lives and follow Jesus' teaching and so on, we know that Mary is with us all the time. And all through our lives, so 
it must be its most fitting that on today we honour her special feast day as our patroness and the patroness of our country and ask her to continue to watch over us and our beloved country and its people. So we pray, Mary, help of Christians, our country's patron, and may pray for us. Amen. May the Lord be praised forever and ever. Kindly stand, we proclaim the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, O Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under points Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And you take your seats, we have offered you now. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands to become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, O Lord, upon the prayers and offerings of your faithful, presented in commemoration of Blessed Mary, the Mother of God, that they may be pleasing to you, and may confer on us your help and forgiveness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, our Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the solemnity of Our Lady, help of Christians. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in 
humble praise as we acclaim holy praise heaven and earth that loves your glory person i know is bless you see comes in the name of the lord person i know is you are indeed holy o lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them in the due form so that they may become for us the body and blood of the lord jesus christ at that time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it but this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith save us savior of the world for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis Upper, Timothy Archbishop, Don his auxiliary bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Helen and Cesarina, whom you have called from this world yourself, Grant that they who are united with your Son in a death like His may also be one with Him in His resurrection. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and her spouse, Blessed Joseph, with the blessed apostles and Patrick and Eugene de Mazenot and Mary of the Cross MacKillop and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, the mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory on us rivers forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed of all and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ, for the kingdom and the power of the glory of Jesus, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant that peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who fall to the supper of the Lamb.
let us pray. Refreshed by this heavenly sacrament, O Lord God, we pray for Australia, our earthly home, that with the help of the Virgin Mary, we may become a new creation in Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Dear friends, now we pray an interesting Australia to Mary help of our Christians. O Immaculate Mary, help of Christians, Queen of heaven and earth, and tender mother of humanity, at this time when a pandemic threatens all your children, we entrust to you our nation, Australia, and all who live in this country. We commit to your intercession all the members of our community, beginning with the weakest ones, from the unborn to the sick, the disabled and the elderly. We commit to you our families, our young and old, and all who are vulnerable, those who are quarantined or anxious. We entrust your immaculate heart those who have lost their livelihood or employment, our pastors and other essential service workers and our leaders at this time. We implore your intercession especially for the protection of doctors and nurses and those who minister to the contagious sick in this crisis. Reign over us, Mother of God, and teach us how to make the hearts of Jesus reign and triumph in us and around us, as it has reigned and triumphed in you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth the Masses in you. Dear friends, thank you for your prayerful participation in the Holy Eucharistic celebration and wish you all have a good day. God bless you.